Welcome back to the shop, friends. Have you ever wondered what the difference is in an expensive versus a cheap combination belt and disc sander? Today, I'm gonna to show you. If you're new here, my name is Jim and I'm the creator of the Lasting Build channel. I'm a hobby woodworker and carpenter. I make weekly videos intended to help you improve your skills and inspire that next project. So I've got an upcoming project where I need to do a lot of wood shaping and I was looking for a good quality sander. So I did pretty much what everybody else does. I got on Google, I started looking at reviews, I got on YouTube, started watching videos and I really couldn't decide between the cheap Harbor Freight model and the expensive jet. The first difference that I can tell you already and I haven't even taken them out of the box is this one is way heavier. It took me a little bit longer yesterday to uh, unbox and assemble and set up these tools than I expected, but we're back at it today and I'll show you all the features of them. So in today's video, we're comparing the Jet Belt Disc Sander Combo model number JSG96 to the Central Machinery Belt Disc Sander item number 97181. If you're a little bit unfamiliar with a combination belt and disc sander, you have the disc portion and the belt portion. So the spinning disc allows you to smooth material using the bed or the table and then you also have a miter gauge and also the ability to angle the tabletop. Additionally, you have a belt sander that can be vertical or horizontal allowing you to flatten longer pieces of material. So for the record, this is not a sponsored video. I bought both of these tools with my own money Therefore, I really have no bias against either one of these tools. So without a doubt, probably the most striking difference between these two tools is the price. The Jet was somewhere around $630 before tax. The Central Machinery was around $62 before tax. So let's get right to the point of the video. What are you getting by spending 10 times more money on this tool? So as I suspected by the weight of the boxes, you're definitely getting a lot more cast iron material in the jet than you are the central machinery. In fact, I'm not sure there's any cast iron in this machine. It looks like the primary material used to build it is aluminum. In contrast to the aluminum framing of the central machinery tool, I was surprised to see quite a bit of hard plastic in the jet. This bottom uh, part of the machine appears to be a hard plastic. It may have some aluminum, sheet aluminum sheeting behind it, I haven't really been able to get underneath it to investigate it because of its sheer weight. As you would suspect, for a much more expensive tool, you're getting a really nice cast iron tabletop for the disc sander. It's very heavy, it's very flat, it's well machined, and it's what you would expect in a very expensive tool. In contrast with the central machinery tool, you get this cast aluminum table that's really poorly machined. In fact, you can see multiple splinters in the surface of the table, which could easily end up in your fingers. And when I checked it for flatness, it's okay. It's not that bad, but it's definitely rough to the touch and you're definitely at risk to puncturing your finger. Now after the overall appearance of the machines and the building materials, you'll notice a major difference in the motors. Both have an electric motor that are three quarters of a horsepower but the jet is significantly bigger and also significantly heavier. I will also say for the each motor, it appears each has a steel housing. However, the Harbor Freight has quite a bit of plastic on it as well. You can probably tell pretty well in the video, there's a huge difference in the size of each one of the machines. The Harbor Freight model has a much smaller footprint in comparison to the jet model. In addition to that, the jet has a six inch by 48 inch belt with a nine inch disc and the central machinery has a four inch by 36 inch belt and a six inch disc. So the assembly process was about the same for each tool. It probably took about an hour per tool to physically assemble the tool. Before we move on to the functionality of the tool, let's talk about the dust collection. This was one of the things that really had me concerned about the Harbor Freight model. When I was researching and I noticed that the dust collection seemed to be a problem for the tool. In fact, with the Harbor Freight model, there is a dust pour underneath the belt. It really doesn't seem to fit my shop back hose or my two inch hoses in which I have in my shop. I'm not sure what it's really intended to fit. There's also a small pour underneath the disc, but it's only about the diameter of my pinky. So I'm not really sure what was intended to attach to that. In contrast, the jet machine comes with a four inch dust port. There is a dust chamber underneath the tool and the four inch hose connects to that, then that can be connected into your dust collection system. It seems like a pretty nice design. I do like this feature to the jet machine. 
you have the ability to shut off the airflow to the belt from the chamber underneath. That way if you're only using the disc sander, you don't have to fuss with wasting flow of air to the belt sander. And you can simply just move this back and forth and tighten it down allowing you to cut off that airflow. While we're discussing the footprint of each one of the models, I will say that the jet comes with holes drilled in the base of the machine allowing you to screw it down to your bench top. The Harbor Freight model does not. If you decide that you're going to screw it down to your tabletop, you're going to have to drill some holes in the base of it and there's not a lot of room there. So let's move on to the most important thing, the thing that everybody wants to know and what is the uh, workability, what is the functionality of these two tools. So let's start out by taking a look at the disc sanders on each one of the tools. I can tell you when I put the sandpaper on the Harbor Freight disc, the machining on the disc was very crude, not very flat, and very rough to the touch. It has stuck well, however. So let's go ahead and turn the tool on and I'll show you how it worked. I'm not sure how well you could tell in the video, but boy, it was generating a ton of dust. I've got a piece of cherry here, and I was actually pushing really hard against the disc, and it wasn't uh, stalling the motor. I did notice on a few videos on YouTube, people were able to stall out the motor pretty easily, but I wasn't able to by just pushing, you know, uh, fairly firmly. Probably my biggest complaint about the Harbor Freight model was trying to adjust the tabletop here. It's not very easy to adjust. If you want to change the angle, flatten, try to square it up, you got to loosen these two Allen bolts and then turn this knob and then move it. It's kind of difficult to get it um, to get it square and then to get it to say 45 degrees or whatever um, angle you want it to be. The machining to the components that allows you to adjust the the tabletop there. It's quite cheap and just some cheap aluminum. Both of the tools did come with 80 grit sandpaper. So now let's go ahead and try out the jet disc. Remember the jet disc is nine inches versus the six inches on the Harbor Freight model. I'm gonna go ahead and use my dust collection for this demonstration since I have it connected and I have a way to do that. I don't have a way to connect dust collection to the Harbor Freight model. I can definitely tell a big difference in the amount of abrasive torque against the piece of wood I'm using. And that's probably because number one, it's a stronger motor. Number two, it's a, it's a more uh, larger diameter disc. Even with the dust collection, it's still generating a fair amount of dust. I'll tell you after adjusting this table on the jet um, this morning, it's much, much easier to make adjustments to the angles of the, of the table to square it off. In addition, if the table is not square to the disc, it's pretty easy to change. There's just two little Allen bolts underneath here and you can loosen those and then move the table slightly and then tighten them back up. It was quite easy to do. The machining to the table attachment is cast iron and aluminum and it is very heavy and does appear to be very high quality. Just turn this lever here and you can make those adjustments between zero and 45 degrees. It's quite easy. So both tools come with a miter attachment. This is the Harbor Freight and this is the Jet. I'm gonna let the video tell the story on these two. This one's very, very cheap and this one's quite nice. So now let's move on and discuss the belt sander on each one of the machines. Each machine will allow you to adjust the belt from vertical to horizontal. So let's start out by looking at the belts in the vertical position. So both machines have a tensioner that allows you to tension the belt. So when you loosen it, it allows the belt, it loosens up the belt where it can be removed and replaced. Each machine also has a mechanism for centering the belt on the wheels in which it runs upon, and that's simply by just turning this knob. The jet machine has a lock, and then you can um, turn this knob clockwise or counterclockwise to center the belt, then lock it in place. So I think both machines are pretty easy to calibrate and get the belts running centered. So when the belt is turning, each model has a fence that prevents your material from um, going with the belt. In other words, it stops it 
and allows the belt to cut the material. You can see on the Harbor Freight, it's just a piece of aluminum. It's just screwed to the frame of the machine. It's, it's quite flimsy. In contrast, the fence on the Jet model is quite robust. It looks like a thick aluminum with some type of plastic insert. You've got the ability to adjust it to get the correct depth from the belt. You wanna have about a 16th of an inch between the fence and the belt. And it also has a miter slot as well. The locking handles on the jet is quite nice as well. For both machines, you have an option if you want to move the table to the vertical belt position. For the Harbor Freight model, you just need to loosen this bolt and then insert this rod into this hole and tighten this one up. No big deal. And then for the jet model, you just loosen this handle here, move the table over to here, and then tighten the handle back up. So now I'm going to show you how to make the vertical belts in the horizontal position for each tool. So for the Harbor Freight model, you just loosen these two nuts. Once the nuts are loose, then you can simply just slide it down. Once it's laying flat, then you just retighten these two nuts. I will say that the nuts are sort of difficult to get to, and that's a little frustrating. So let me show you how the belt works. I really don't see any major issues with the belt. And something else that I will note is that it's very flat when I take a straight edge and I run it across the belt. That's actually fairly surprising. So one thing you should know if you're gonna use the dust collection on the Harbor Freight model, when you lay it in the horizontal position, it's gonna be pretty hard to get to it. You can see how it's in this cubby here. You're gonna to have to have some way of uh, angling that uh, to your hose. So now let me show you how to change the jet from the vertical to the horizontal position. There is a single Allen bolt here. Once that Allen bolt is loose and these little doors are open, then it's pretty easy to just push it right over. Go ahead and show you how the belt works on the jet. I'm gonna turn my dust collector on. As I pretty much expected with the jet, there's a lot more power in the belt sander. And you gotta be careful, you gotta hold that material quite tight or it'll throw it right out of your hand. So let me give you a few words to describe each tool sort of off the top of my head. The Harbor Freight model is low cost, very low cost. It has a small footprint, which is actually pretty nice. It's made from fairly cheap materials, creating a lightweight machine. It actually works better than I expected and even though it was quite difficult to calibrate and get you know the the table squared to the disc it does work and it can be done it's just going to be a little bit harder for you so now let me describe the jet it's expensive it's very expensive it's got a large footprint it's very heavy it's made of some really nice material the machining is excellent it's very easy to calibrate it's going to be very easy to use it has a ton of power the dust collection is excellent. I really like the way the dust collection is. In contrast to Harbor Freight, the dust collection is almost non-existent. So my final thoughts, let me give you this comparison. Imagine showing up to a church softball game. Harbor Freight is like the wooden bat. Jet is like the aluminum bat. You can use the wooden bat to play. It's gonna be a whole lot harder to hit that home run. You might hurt your hand in the process and it's probably gonna break after a few uses. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys on the next one.